Oh, I'm a ghost. Ah, fun's over. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about scales and body fat and body fat percentages. If you know me, you know I am totally against daily monitoring, um, mainly for the fact that we fluctuate in weight a lot, especially as women. Ladies, we can fluctuate anywhere from like two to three pounds a day. I can wake up and measure myself and be three pounds heavier the next day. And I ate a piece of broccoli that day. But in all seriousness, eating one slice of cake is not gonna make you gain weight, just like eating one piece of broccoli is not gonna make you lose it. It takes time. So with that being said, let's get down to the nitty gritty of weighing ourselves. When you step on a scale, it shows you a number. That number does not include how much you had to drink that day, whatever uh, clothing you're wearing, if you are wearing any, that's entirely up to you, I guess what you had to eat the day before that may still be in your body. So the best time to weigh yourself obviously is first thing in the morning when you wake up um, and after you've used the restroom and in minimal clothing. However, even though you have used the restroom, it does not mean you have completely gotten out everything that you've had to drink the day before or maybe in the middle of the night. And it also doesn't account for things that stay in our bodies longer uh, than some other foods that we eat. For example, chicken is processed a lot faster than beef. Sometimes beef can take an extra day to process through your intestines and get out. But at the end of the day, the scale does not tell you anything but a number. It doesn't tell you your water weight. It doesn't tell you um, how much your bones and organs weigh. It doesn't tell you how much your fat weighs versus your muscle. So if you're working out or starting a new workout program, and you've been standing on the scale and all of a sudden it's going up and you're trying really hard, you may be gaining muscle. And if that's the case, congratulations. See where I'm going with this, guys? If you are spending a ton of time and you're really dedicating yourself to changing your body, to getting healthier, to eating right, uh, to working out and maybe changing the composition of your body, and you step on a scale day to day and you see it going up, how discouraging is that? I don't know about you guys, but I want the most encouraging, motivating, um, you're doing a great job type things in my life and not issues where I'm looking at it going, I have nothing to show for all of this, this work that I put into this. All it takes sometimes is one little piece of discouragement to get me unmotivated, to throw me off my game, to make me think, why am I even doing this in the first place? So I am not for daily monitoring. I weigh myself like once a week, sometimes I even forget. But if you are a person that likes to daily monitor, then I would suggest getting some sort of an app. Hi, Sai. Oh, that's a good stretch. I would suggest getting some sort of like an app that shows you your progression over time so that you can kind of see a gradual increase and decrease and it doesn't you know, tell you you've been this and now you're this and now you're this, but you should be here. It's just a really gradual progression so that you can see kind of the changes in your body. So a lot of scales have something called bioelectrical impedance, and that's those little silver um, either dots or sometimes they look like footprints or squares um, on the plate of the actual scale. And when you step onto that, what it does is it sends pulses through your body that travels through a specific type of tissue. This tissue usually conducts the impulse more than something like, uh, like your muscle would or your bones or something like that. So it goes through things like fatty tissue that holds a lot more uh, moisture to give kind of an estimated range of what your body fat percentage is. The issue with these is that they can typically be anywhere from like five to 10% off. So if you think that you're doing really well and all of a sudden you see that it's 10% more than what you originally anticipated your body fat would be the first time you sat on the set. <laughs> Don't sit on it, stand on it. The first time that you stand on your scale, then there's an issue and you're probably gonna be so determined to just chuck the scale out the window. <laughs> So anyways, let me just debunk everything I told you and show you my scale. This is the scale that I use. It's by the company Renfo. I've actually found the bioelectrical impedance, which are these sensors here that we talked about. I have found it to be 
fairly accurate, actually more accurate than any of the other scales that I have tried. The reason why I say that that scale is uh, fairly accurate with body fat percentage is because I have done skin fold measurements on myself. Well, actually you need someone else to do it for you. Brian has done skin fold measurements on me with a skin fold caliper. Um, now these you can get online also. I'm not sure if these are in local pharmacies. We don't have a local pharmacy within like miles of us. So I'm kind of unplugged. However, um, this skin fold caliper um, has done really well on me. Typically these come with a chart uh, that says what your body fat percentage is and it gives you instructions on how to measure maybe like two to three places. You should be measuring four places, your bicep, your tricep, your subscapular underneath of your scapula, and the iliac crest, which is just above your hip bone. And once you measure those, then there is a specific chart uh, that you can go off of that I use, um, that I got through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. And it is pretty accurate. And like I said, the scale was only like 1% off. So the only other way that you can really use a scale that has that body fat percentage measurement in it is if you step on and you don't look at it as that is my true body fat percentage. It's if you step on it, you look at it as a starting point and just say, okay, that may not be my accurate starting body fat percentage, but in the weeks and months to come, if you see that body fat percentage start lowering, then you know at least you're making some sort of progress, even though it may not be your exact body fat percentage. Does that make sense? I wanted to keep this video short and sweet because my last one was pretty long, but if you watched it, thanks. I had a few things to say on the subject. That's that I am all for weighing yourself. I am not for weighing yourself daily. So as always, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you next time. Bye guys. Don't, don't do it. Get off that scale.